Hello everyone, Sonar Wolf here, and welcome to my guide detailing how to do backward metal bolt runs. In this video, I will tell you everything that you need to know in order to do these runs successfully and as, and as efficiently as possible. To start, backward metal bolt runs can be quite profitable depending on luck, and this is not a daily. You can actually do up to 4 backward metal bolt runs every single day for a profit of anywhere from 1.3 million to 4 million GP. That being said, each run will take about 5 minutes, and so in total you'd only be spending about 20 minutes of effort every single day to, to make this kind of money, so it's quite worth doing every single day to maximize your profits in as little as effort as possible. Um, that being said, let's talk about requirements and other helpful items that will make your trips as fast as possible. So, to begin making backremental bolts, you will need at least 85 wood cutting and 93 fletching. Uh, this is boostable and assistable, if I remember correctly. So, if you have a friend that you'd like to bring along with you, you can you can make them yourself um, with their help. When you actually make them, the process is you cut down one of these bloodwood trees and you will, inside of your inventory, get logs, and then you have to fletch the logs into uh, uh, shafts, and then you can add backer metal bolt tips, which you can buy from Mami Rimba over here in Edgeville. So you can buy them at 500 at a time, or you can buy 50,000 packs at a time. I, it doesn't really matter, but I wouldn't recommend taking any more than about four to five hundred at a time simply because uh, a few of the locations in which these blood trees exist bloodwood trees exist is in the wilderness there are seven bloodwood trees in total that you can chop down four of them are in safe locations and three of them are in the wilderness um, while you will be able to do backward metal bolt runs without going into the wilderness at all if you choose most of your profit will come from the wilderness, despite there only being three trees, because they are stronger. They won't get chopped down as fast as the ones found in safe areas, which you will see in a moment. The next few items that I want to talk about are just basically teleport items, which is very good to have inside of your inventory just to make your runs as efficient as possible. The first one is a portable fairy ring. Um, the second is a hooded, or non-hooded I guess, dungeoneering cape of any kind. The Wilderness Sword 4 to allow you access to teleport to the Wilderness Agility Course. And Draken's Medallion in order for you to teleport to, to Darkmire. So that being said, let's get started. So like I said, you want to have at least anywhere from 400 to 500 back remental vault tips in you all at all times. Uh, while you are making these, you have to stand next to the bloodwood tree in order for you to make the bolts. If you chop down the tree and then you have the logs and you sort of run away before you make the bolt tips, they will disappear. You have to make the tips before you leave the area. So the first area is also in Edgeville where you can get, where you can actually chop down one of these bloodwood trees. So you can't chop down that one. Uh, northeast right next to the wilderness wall, but however in the soul wars portal just south in Edgeville You can chop one right here Another another useful uh, item is an augmented crystal hatchet with the uh, honed four or five if you're lucky enough to, to receive one of those um, and also the the nature senten sentinels uh, outfit for wood cutting they can drastically increase the amount of, of logs that you get before the tree actually dies. And another good aura to use actually now that I'm thinking about it is the Lumberjack aura. You can use any kind that you have, but this one is the greater, which gives me a 5% increased chance, which I'll be using too. So that being said, let's get started. So you'll see I'll be chopping down this tree and I get Bloodwood logs. And I think I'm actually getting quite lucky from this tree. Normally for the ones in the safe zone area, you only usually get about one, two, maybe three logs. So far I've got six, which is quite uncommon. Cool. So I've gotten seven logs from this tree, which you will see in a moment. 
will give me quite a bit of profit and that only took about 20 seconds to do and we'll see how much money that we've made in a moment so then once you get these bolt shafts you're going to want to tip them with the backremental bolt tips that you buy from the lady the special lady all right so you see that took no time at all and already we've made 150 55k so let's continue so this is why we have a portable fairy ring is because the next place I want to go to is the Glacor Cave. So the code for the Glacor Cave is DKQ. You can add it to your favorites list here and it makes teleporting a cinch. So what you're gonna do is once you get here, you're gonna run all the way up north and you're going to leave the cave. Once you're outside of the cave, you want to head west, where you'll find another bloodwood tree. So let's go chop it down. And the next location is in Prif. So if we hit 0, 0, and 1 to go to the Horde Stalker dungeon with the Dungeoneering Cape, teleport us directly in front of this resource dungeon which we can then enter and you will find another bloodwood tree right here along with divine herb patches and you can do those if you want while you're here as well ah so this is a little bit more typical of what happens is you'll only get one bloodwood log from the safe zones and don't forget to tip them waitresses and the last place that we're going to be going to is Darkmire so with your Drekken's medallion we'll be heading to Darkmire and you don't actually need to wear the camouflage to cut down this this tree because of where it's located uh, none of the none of the fire watches will actually be able to touch you so what you're gonna do is once you come out here you see it screams human human but no human So here's the bloodwood tree, and we'll go ahead and give it a chop. All right, and that concludes the four safe zone locations. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, head back to Edgeville just to bank and get prepared for the wilderness locations, which I'll talk about in a moment. Oh, before I do, I'm gonna get some more bolt tips. And you see 500 of these bolt tips only cost you around 100K. So 230 is what I've made so far. Let's see how much that is worth. 510k, just immediately, just from the safe zone locations, which is quite impressive. It means it's going to be a good run. So for the wilderness trips, what we're going to do is we're going to bank everything that we do not need. So we don't need the Draken's Medallion anymore. We don't need the Fairy Ring. We don't need the, the Dungeoneering Hood. And we don't need the bolts that we already made. So we don't need, there's no sense in risking them. You see, I've already got 170 bolts in my bank. That was all I got one trip uh, prior to doing this video. So we're just going to deposit those. So all we need is uh, our hatchet, our outfit, bolt tips, and the Wilderness Sword 4. So the first place that we're going to go to is the Wilderness Agility Course. It is the most awkward to get out of, and so it makes sense to go to it first in order to have less chance of a death, I suppose. <laughs> So here we are in the wilderness. It's kind of scary, right? But if you check on death, the only thing that you are actually risking if you don't skull is your back metal bolt tips. Your outfit will always be kept 
and uh, your crystal hatchet should be kept as well as long as like I said you don't skull. If you really want to you can put on a protect item just in case. But you'll see that these messages say this tree is more robust than most and refuses to be felled just yet. So that means you're going to get a lot more of these logs in the wilderness than you would in the safe zones. But I got really lucky apparently in the safe zones. So. Right, so now that we have all of our bolts crafted, what we're going to do is we're going to head to the mage arena over here because it is a safe zone that, oops, can't search. There we go. It is a safe zone that you can access a bank as well. So we can not only sort of protect ourselves while we're going through here, but we can also store sort of, you know, any progress that we've made. So we risk losing less if we get PK'd. But who, let's be honest, who really PK's anymore? So, head to the bank. Deposit everything we've made already. And then because this is a safe zone, you can also freely teleport. So the next place that I want us to teleport to actually is the Wilderness Volcano with the lodestones. Having access to the Wilderness Sword, I forget which tier it is that grants you access to choose which obelisk you go to. Um, but you need the you need the four to teleport to the Agility Wilderness anyway. But so we're going to be clicking on level 18. I just saw someone actually running around here. Hopefully they're not going to PK me, but we'll see. So here we are, level 18, and we're going to run southwest right next to the altar over here. And you will see there's another blood wood tree. The great thing about this spot is that there's a bank right next to it. So like I said, once you're done chopping these things, you're just gonna head straight to the bank right here and sort of bank any of your progress that you've already made, which is why I'm doing the trees in this order. Perfect. So now we have our bolts, and we're going to bank them. And then what we're going to do again is we're going to teleport to the Wilderness Volcano once more, and since we are only in the level 11 wilderness, then we still can teleport while we're there. The reason for this is just simply because it's the fastest way to get to the obelisk. But this time we're going to choose level 50. Once we get here, I'm going to run southeast. You'll see there's the bloodwood tree right there, but we have to go to the gate first. So we're going to open this gate. If that gate's ever open, well, you know that someone's been here recently, so be on the lookout. And this is the final tree that we'll be doing today. And then we're going to run back to the obelisk and we're going to teleport out of here. I don't like the wilderness as much as anyone else. I remember getting skull tricked or full torva and a scythe. It's not a good day. So be careful. And then you can go ahead and operate your wilderness sword just teleport straight to Edgeville. Beautiful. So let's take a look at the damage now and see how much we've actually made. And 
that we've made in that time span 1.5 mil almost so it's an incredibly easy incredibly quick way to make a lot of money and you should definitely be doing them every single day whenever you can so thank you for watching and uh, I hope to see you next time.